Hi there, welcome back to Yepatra's Review. Now in this episode we look at the film The Swiss Conspiracy, directed by Jack Arnold in the year 1976. Now this film, there are, this is a public domain film. There are numerous prints of it floating around in DVD and can also be seen on YouTube as a summer review. It should be noted that there are two different cuts of the film out there. My personal copy, I actually managed to meld the two together. I'll explain a little bit about that later. Now. Former U.S. Justice Department turned security consultant David Christopher is hired by the managers of a wealthy Swiss bank in order to uncover the identity of an extortionist who is blackmailing the bank into paying a ransom in return for not publishing the top secret numbered accounts of a number of clients. David agrees to the request but finds that one of the blackmail victims is an old enemy of his, a gangster from Chicago named Bobby Hayes, who threatens David. But after Hayes is found dead, killed by a pair of assassins, hired by the extortionist, David begins to wonder if an extortionist is actually somebody working for an inside of the bank. Now this rather tawdry European crime thriller is a rather standard piece of throwaway Euro trash cinema from the 70s that somehow looks more engaging than it ultimately is, due to the expert direction of American director Jack Arnold, a director who's been responsible for quite a few uh, 1950s uh, Atomic Monster films. He infuses a rather convoluted and stupid story with a mild sense of urgency. In terms of plot, the Swiss conspiracy is just plain junk, as the story doesn't make any real sense if you really give it some good thought to it, and the most observant viewers can probably guess the identity of the extortionist well in advance. That said, there are two main edits of the film, each missing footage from the other. I'll explain that later on. And the plot twists don't work in any real world setting. As for the acting, David Johnson who was already on his way to the grave by the time this was shot, goes through the film with an irritable look on his face and a slightly silly attitude, looking more like a pissed off tourist than a security consultant, giving the impression that he'd rather be somewhere else. I hope he actually got to do some sightseeing, because in the 70s he was doing a lot of international films. I will review one of his other films, last film's uh, Warhead, aka Prison in the Middle, in the future. That was released after this one, but was made before. Anyway, he and most of the supporting cast practically sleepwalk their way through this one, although John Saxon gives his role of the blackmail victim gangster an angry demeanor that outclasses the attitude of Jansen considerably. David Hess is also in this as well, as an assassin, but doesn't really get a chance to make any real impression giving his roles minimalist material. Now, while The Swiss Conspiracy is pretty much a stupid film, it does have some strengths going for it, mainly the nice location shooting in various areas of Switzerland, and an agreeably funky, cheesy score that sounds like it was originally played at a European discotheque, which adds to the escapism factor of the film, making a reasonable attempt to detract from the silly plot. The climax at the end is flatly staged, but unintentionally amusing due to a visual effects goof involving the dummy being thrown off the cliff after Johnson and probably disables the villain's helicopter with a pistol. The film doesn't really slouch in the action quotient, giving us some plain car chases, shootout, some brutal fistfights in the climax. The film even starts an assassination by shotgun in a restaurant to kick things off. Don't go into this one expecting anything resembling classic thriller tropes, but just park your brain to neutral and enjoy the pretty scenery, especially economical given most public domain DVDs of this come at an agreeably cheap price tag. Now, there are two different cuts of the film currently in circulation. The first, which has a logo of a studio on it, uh, removes the first few seconds of the restaurant assassination at the beginning, and so removes several minor scenes, particularly the post coital discussion between Janssen and Senterberger. The second version starts with a text scroll describing the nature of Swiss banks, removes the logo, and restores the scenes that the first version cut out, but at the price of removing the initial confrontation between Janssen and John Saxon inside the bank, where, you know, where Saxon walks in and says, Are you crazy? He's US Justice Department, that scene. And the scene right after that, when Johnson explains Saxon's history and agrees to be hired by the bank to solve the crisis. The logo version in Australia was re released by Flash Flashback Entertainment, while the text scroll version is found on other public domain labels and normally is in lesser condition than the logo version. But the, the text scroll version is more washed out in its color scheme. I personally made a print where I melded the two versions together, mainly by taking the text scroll version and just adding the the bank scene from the logo version into it. Now, the go it's given the film is public domain, so if you get the two versions, you can do them together yourself if you can. But 
might be hard to find them. Anyway, there is no gore in this film, but some bullet holes are seen, including one guy on a on a uh, ski lift with a hole in his head. <laughs> there is no actual nudity, although you can just very barely have something of a shot to see Santa Burger's breasts, but very barely. Now, Flashway Entertainment, a tier three budget label, this label from the 2000s early 2010s, released the logo version onto their single disc releases, while the text scroll version is found on other labels like Showtime Entertainment. No release of this film has ever been accompanied by any supplements. So I give this a C, which is a 4 out of 10, meaning that it's an average film. Anyway, that's it for this review.